things to absolutely love and things that you probably won't really like about Nassau, Bahamas. In this video, I'm sharing with you helpful travel tips so you know what to expect on your beach vacation coming up. And if you're new here, yo, I'm Christine Lozada with Where in the World is CL, and I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get out, and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. I've spent a month on this island, and there are a lot of things I've learned about traveling here, and I wanna help you out so that you can have the best trip possible. So let's dive in with, actually, let's start positive. Something to love. I love how easy it is to travel around the Bahamas. I mean, I spent a month in Nassau and the ability to be able to speak English, albeit sometimes some of the Bahamians have, you know, that very Bahamian accent, that island accent on top of the English, but they speak English. You can pay in US dollars everywhere. It's one-to-one -one with the Bahamian dollar but that makes it really easy. So yes, you might pay with a US $20 bill and get changed back in a mix between Bahamian dollars and US dollars, but it's so easy to be able to spend money there. And it's also easy because in all of your restaurant bills, the 10% VAT or 10% tax plus the 15% gratuity is already added on there. And that's basically a standard just about everywhere that I went to. And if you're curious what restaurants I'm talking about, you can go check out my restaurant video. There's a lot of awesome spots on there, but that made it really easy. I like to keep it real. And I'll say that the thing I didn't love is that Bahamian culture isn't one of amazing customer service. It doesn't mean I didn't get good customer service. There are some restaurants in which I had the best waiters and waitresses and it was amazing but I would say the majority of the time it's just not part of Bahamian culture to be like amazing at customer service and so a lot of times I actually felt like I, I did something wrong or I offended somebody uh, and it's just the customer service is not that great but they definitely expect you to tip on top of the 15% a lot of times, especially in the resorts. So that's just something to be aware of. It doesn't mean it's going to happen to you, but that was my experience uh, from spending an entire month on the island. Let's talk about getting in and getting around. If you're coming into Nassau Airport, super easy. Uh, there's an entire area with taxi cabs lined up to take you to wherever you're going. Um, most places that tourists are going to are usually a 15 minute ride from the airport and it's around 25 to $30 to get there. So that's really easy. The other thing to know about getting in at the airport is depending on when you're traveling to Nassau, you, there might be pandemic rules. So make sure you check my other video, link in the description below, so you know what to expect about that. I don't want you to be caught off guard. And another thing is if you're coming in via cruise, if you're coming into the port, uh, you are coming right into downtown Nassau, which if you are not there <laughs> during um, a cruise time, there's it's just completely empty. Like downtown Nassau is a ghost town if there are no cruises in port, it's kind of wild. By the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, cheers that like button, consider subscribing and make sure you check the description. This is one of many videos about this amazing island. And if you have a helpful tip, we're all a community, add it in the description below so we can help each other out and let's move on. Getting around is one that as long as you're okay with taking taxis and you're staying at a resort where the taxis are lined up, you're fine. Otherwise, it's kind of a project. Like if you're traveling solo for an entire month, uh, getting around is kind of a challenge. So here are your options. Driving. I love using the rental cars. Link in the description below. It's what I use for rentalcars.com for all my international travel. But it's helpful to know that in the Bahamas, you drive on the left side of the road. So it's the opposite. If you're coming from the United States, you're driving on the other side of the road. And there's not a lot of lights. There's almost no lights on the island. It's mainly roundabouts. So if you're both transitioning to driving on the left-hand side of the road and you're not used to roundabouts, that's just something to be aware of. It took me, I mean, I don't know. I'm a pretty good driver in my opinion, uh, but it took a little bit of practice to get comfortable driving in the Bahamas. Plus, you know, local Bahamians, whoo, 
They drive fast and they want you to get out of the way. So just know that that's the environment you're getting into if you're driving. For me, I paid uh, $6 a gallon the first time I filled up and $6 and 30 cents a gallon. The second time I filled up. I don't think it's meant to be this complicated, but I'm like having a really complicated time figuring out how to get gas. You do not pump your own gas, they pump it for you. It's significantly more of a confusing process than I expected, um, but that's what you can expect in terms of gas rates. The other thing to know is parking can be a challenge, especially in downtown. There's basically no meters, so anyone who's working at those places in downtown will go and park there and park there all day. And so there's there's no parking. Uh, so most of the times I would park outside of downtown and walk in, which short distances, super easy, 10, 15, 20 minute walks, no biggie. When it's 96 degrees with 100% humidity and it's hot outside, then it feels a little bit longer than that, but it's totally doable. So I would generally park outside of downtown and walk in anytime I was doing that. Speaking of walking, I looked into bike rentals. I will link some of the places I was looking at to rent a bike. Um, there are definitely amazing triathletes on the island that I would see in the mornings going out on their long bike rides, but this is not the place with bike lanes. So I opted out of riding a bike. I wanted to live to see another day. Um, I also did a 12 hour walk inspired by Colin O'Brady. That's a whole other video, link in the description below. But the takeaway from that is walking is not easy around the island. There, are, Whether it's stray dogs or there's no sidewalks, um, it's not an easy place that's very pedestrian friendly. There are some areas with amazing walking paths, for example, around Bahamar and some areas of downtown, but generally walking and biking is not easy. I did, they had bird scooters. I used a bird scooter. I also thought that that would be the last day I had on earth uh, because of what I said about there not being sidewalks, Bahamians driving pretty fast and even though uh, there are, you know, pedestrian crosswalks and stuff, by no means do pedestrians or bikers or people on bird scooters have the right of way by any means. Um, and so a lot of cars are ripping around the corners of those roundabouts and uh, don't get clipped when you're on a scooter. But bird scooters are available. Not a lot of people use them, but it is an option uh, that is available to you. Ooh, and if you want to be sexy, chartering a plane is super fun. Check out my other video going to Kamalumi Key to a private island. That was super fun, but you can charter a plane, um, a round trip flight for that one, for example, in a nine seater chartered plane costs us $2,000 for a round trip flight. That's another fun way to get around. But speaking of which, let's keep it real and let's talk about prices because that I don't know, it depends on where you're traveling from. If you're coming from New York, if you're coming from San Francisco, places that I have lived, it's really no different. Um, but relative, prices in the Bahamas are very expensive. And so it's something to be aware of because we all gotta know the price, right? To be able to plan accordingly for our travel and to have a good trip. And one thing to know is, uh, I talked about gas prices not being cheap. Um, the cab prices can be relatively inexpensive. I guess it depends on how you look at it, but those, you know, 10, 15 minute rides will cost you around 20, 25, $30 each way. Um, but things like, here, let's just give a few examples of the places I ate at. If you want from Bon Vivant, a flat white, a hot toddy, and an empanada. And again, they're adding the 10% tax and the 15% gratuity. That cost me $36. Or how about a small sparkling water, a sushi roll, and a plate of fish at the poop deck, which yes, I did eat there because it's called the poop deck, which is funny in my opinion. They have two locations, by the way. I was at the Sandy Port location. That was $64 all in for that meal. Um, so those are just a couple examples of what things cost. Um, I also posted um, a TikTok about how a small random bag of groceries that included some drink mixers, uh, some jam and some other random things cost me $160. Things on the island, it's an island. 
it's expensive. And so don't expect to come here for cheap travel. The Bahamas was recently named the third most expensive country in the world. So just know that going in. Let's talk about some other helpful things to know, like the bugs, the water, and the weather. The bugs, expect the bugs, primarily mosquitoes. I got eaten alive in the Bahamas. So anytime you are outside, make sure you got plenty of bug spray, super important. Um, not everyone gets eaten as alive as I do, so that's up to you. Um, but bug spray was really helpful for me. And you'll also just find a smattering of other crazy kinds of bugs, like these crazy spiders that I found. But in general, there's plenty of bugs. I mean, it's an island, so just expect that. Let's talk about the water. The water is one where, oh, well, well, the Bahamas water is beautiful and amazing. See clear at the bottom, some of the most beautiful water in the world. But I'm talking about the water that you drink, and I think you should be careful. That's my opinion. If you're traveling from the United States, um, I had issues with the water. I was never drinking water out of the tap, but simply brushing my teeth with the water was making me sick for the first week I was there. Um, so if you have a softer stomach, I don't know how you say it, if you have a sensitive stomach, you might consider uh, brushing your teeth with bottled water. Make sure you always drink bottled water. And you can expect things like the resorts to have filtered water, filtered ice, etc. Um, that's just something to be aware of. I was really sick. <laughs> Let's talk about the weather. The weather in the Bahamas, I mean, this is, this is a tropical island, but there's wet season and dry season. And you can basically always expect the weather to be warmer between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but hurricane season is really June through November. So it's that time frame with the most amount of potential hurricane activity happening uh, between August and October. I was there for the entire month of August, 2022. I didn't have any issues, but it's one of those things where it's like, you just never know. Um, it also means that prices during these times are relatively less expensive than during peak times, like during dry season. So let's talk about that. So during dry seasons, I mean, the temperature can drop even lower, like down to the 60s, but not guaranteed. Um, there are some links in the description below if you wanna look more into the weather. But the dry season, which is cooler and less humid, that's between December and May. And that's also when you can expect to pay more at the resorts if that's how you're staying in the Bahamas. Another helpful thing to know about the weather is that it can change pretty instantly. I went paddling, stand up paddling, just about every single day I was in the Bahamas and it can be a flat glass, beautiful sea at the bottom one second, and it can be rocky and wavy and bringing you out to sea the next. So things can change very quickly. It can be sunny skies and all of a sudden I'm flying my drone and the weather comes in and that happens real quick, which by the way, if you're curious about how to bring a drone in, I have a separate video about that on my drone YouTube channel. Make sure you check that out if you're interested. But the weather can change super quickly, both in the air and also when you're on the water. Tell me in the comments below when you're coming to NASA Bahamas, maybe I'll see you on the island. Cheers that like button. If you had some fun with me, check the videos in the description below and I will see you in the next venture. Ciao. <laughs>